Spartanburg's recognized. Speak on the amendment. Members of the Senate, I, I, I hear that song, this land is my land, this land is your land, that we learned as kids. So I guess the argument is that because it's a good deal, the state should be purchasing land because it's for the good of the people. Even though we just heard someone who is, is uh, well known in the real estate industry ask questions about how this land is being used now. But we're going to put two more million dollars into it. Why? Because it's popular. We got all kind of people down here. Now the folks back home that are paying the bill for this budget, the folks that are working today, they're not watching us on e ETV right now, most of them. They're answering phones. They're doing the jobs of two and three people because they've had to lay off. They're struggling and fighting to survive, but we're going to buy some land because it would, some of us want this land. I think if we don't get state government in a situation where if it doesn't benefit all, we don't spend it. We just mentioned all the private money that goes into that. Well, these conservationists, they have tons of money. They, you know, I hear the argument that we've got to get all this money out of politics, but they're big donors. Some of those very folks that talk about getting the money out of politics have big donors that are part of this conservation movement. People told me, you know, you get elected and they say, these are the things, this is the third rail, this is what you don't interfere with. Don't mess with the higher ed, don't question that, and stay away from the conservation groups because they'll get mad. And I'm not going to use the word, I'll use the word donkey that was used here earlier, and I guess it was referring to some of us that don't feel like that the conservation folks have the right to the treasury. If they want to spend their money on this, then let them do it. But $2 million, it seems like nothing to us. And maybe I'm, you know, I like the fact that we've got broad representation in the Senate. And I know we've talked about financial disclosures and, and some arguments over that, which really doesn't bother me because I'm a struggling guy just trying to survive. And sometimes I wonder why I'm here and is it worth it? But then I think, who else in this chamber has the same vantage point I have? I'm the guy that sits back and tries to figure out how he's going to pay these bills. We got folks, this unemployment system, I've had people tell me they're going to have to laugh. I've had people tell me they're going to have to shut down because they can't pay the tax. And you know what they'll be called when they shut down? They'll be called tax cheats. That's what we'll call them, tax cheats. Fighting to survive, paying the bills for $2 million here, $3 million there, $10 million here. Now, Senator Jackson, who is Senator from Richland, is one of my best friends in this chamber. And we've got, when he stands up there and he talks about Medicaid funding, we've got a difference of opinion. But when he says what he says, he's looking for out for people that are in need. Now, do I think the system's abused? Absolutely, I think it's abused. But he, when he stands there, he is looking out for folks in need. And if you, I don't know how you can compare Medicaid spending with conservation bank spending. We don't have unlimited resources, and if, if you're willing to spend money, if you're willing to spend money in this body, you better think about how important that money is because you're taking that from somebody. And if they can't afford it, then they're a tax cheat, but you're taking it from somebody. So let's think about if we spend other people's money. You got these folks all over this state that are involved in this movement, which I don't have. A, hey, listen, I was raised out in the country. I want clean water. I want clean air. I think it's great if you get in an airplane and fly over this state, there's so much vacant land and so much, I mean, this whole country. But I don't think that, that folks that are for the conservation movement think about the impact of this, but the more the state spends, the more the state owns, the less the people really own. We just, we just heard that we got this land the state bought, but we throw up fences around it so the people can't enjoy it. But that won't be discussed, because you know what we'll do? We'll leave this body... And those folks, and I don't have any, let me tell you about what I've learned about politics. This isn't personal. Some of us get, make things personal. They get mad if we call a point of order about something that affects somebody. They get angry about it. It's not personal. We got beliefs. I hope we do. I hope, and let me tell you the other thing. You get in this body, and I have every senator in this chamber I've enjoyed getting to know. And even once, I, you know, some of my favorite senators I have the least in agreement with on, on issues. I mean, I'm serious. I tell people back home, and they give me a hard time saying I'm a good old boy. I tell them, I said, let me tell you, those folks, and if you want to go on a fishing or a hunting trip, those are the most entertaining, fun bunch of people you'll be around in your life. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you'll vote with them on some things that you don't agree with. 
because you like them. Well, our job is not here to vote with folks because we agree with them because we like them. Our job is to do the right thing. And I like those conservation folks. I've met many of them. I've got a lot of them in my district. And, and I'm sure they're going to give me a hard time about standing up here fighting against their $2 million. But I've got to think about those folks that can't come down here right now, that aren't retired, that aren't independently wealthy, that can't give a matching fund. I've got to think about that guy that calls me and says, I'm going to have to shut down my business because of this unemployment tax increase. Because you guys down in Columbia decided that you wanted to, and, and I've been there. I mean, you, got some, you have somebody dead to right and you go appeal. And I know we fixed that. But the money that we've spent in the past now has to be recouped. But, you know, somebody was terminated for cause, you go to the appeal, and they still get it. So employers said, hey, it's not costing me anything. So why should I take the time away from my business to go and deal with this unemployment claim? I'll just let them have it. Well, now guess what? The bill's due. And instead of dealing with that bill that's due right now, we're going to find a couple million here for this and a few million here for that. We're going to get our pats on the back. We're going to go home. The folks are out of business. Guess what they're not going to do? They're not going to have any money. So how are they going to get us out of office? The conservation people might be mad. And they might work against us. But you know what? The folks that we put out of business, guess what they'll be? They'll be unemployed. And you know what they'll need? They'll need some Medicaid. So what are they going to do? Hey, they're dependent on us. They can't get us out of office. But here's the problem. Once this scheme ends, once this scheme ends, and there's no private sector, where's the money? Where's the money? We can't even pay somebody to stand up here and bang a gavel once we've bankrupted the state. And the fact that we sit here, and this is going to go on all day, and I, and I tell you, I come up here and sometimes I think, you know, it's like the preacher that sometimes runs off, you know, some of the, 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 uh, audience there you know you you talk and you talk and then sometimes you step on too many toes and people start leaving and and I've had folks in the Senate tell me you know you you argue your side enough sometimes you lose votes over it well I believe and and, and I always want to bring religious in I, I've, I've kind of you know I, I'm a Christian I'm saved by grace um but I know that I fall far short of what I'm supposed to be and I want to stand up behind this microphone as a matter of fact I the guy that ran my campaign, I told him I thought I was called to preach and I was a little concerned about things because I didn't want to do it. And he said, well, you know what, maybe God wants you to preach his word from the floor of the South Carolina Senate. And I thought, well, you know, everybody wants to talk about church and state, which really it doesn't exist. That separation is not there in the Constitution. But I want to thank Senator Shaheen for bringing God into this thing. Because we are charged, I heard the charge, to take care of the earth. But we're not going to take care of these babies before they're born. But we're going to protect the stream. And let me tell you, in the South Carolina Senate, we're not going to let you put a dolphin on display. We got our limits. Well, I'm going to be up early and often during this budget. Every time I see something, Lord willing, that I can get up behind this microphone that is not essential core government service. And those folks with those don't tread on me flags are going to look at these votes. And when they realize that, you know what? I don't have health insurance coverage anymore because my company couldn't afford to provide it. But yet they voted for those state guys couldn't pay four more dollars a month. That makes me mad. And then when they go and they look at these roll call votes, which thank the Lord we got them, because I ran against an incumbent, and, and I know we vote now because we put it in our rules, but when I ran against that incumbent back in 2004, they wasn't on the record voting. He was for and against everything. I mean, you, you raise enough money, you tell people what you're for and against, you find out what they're for and against, and everything goes well. Well, now we got on the record voting by statute because we got this Rule 24 and all these provisos in the, in the budget that are probably in violation that we didn't have time to catch them all. Well, we don't really have to play by the rules all the time, but we got to follow the law. So I want to say I love this on the record voting. So we're going to have a roll call on the Conservation Bank, and you guys, can I can get the heat from the conservation folks because I try to knock them out of $2 million. And you can catch the heat from all the folks that are at home wondering why we're spending $2 million buying up la more land for the state. I mean, I'm, I go down 26 right now, 26 in, uh, I believe it's 26 in Reba Road. That, the state's got a huge piece of land for sale over there. We got buildings, buildings we got sitting empty for sale. We got plenty of assets. But the guy that just had his house foreclosed on, he don't have any assets. But I hope that he votes because he has a right to vote. 
So I hope that he votes, and I hope that, that somehow, although he won't have any money, somebody gets the word out. I mean, I know there's different groups that get the word out, how people vote on these things. So we're going to vote on this, we're going to vote on some other things, and we're going to find out where we stand. I want to say that I appreciate um, the senator from, from Aiken and uh, Edgefield, and I appreciate the senator from Richland and the lively debate we had. I think it's time to stop playing games in this chamber and lay out our stand, post our flag, and say where we're going to be. And I'm for less government, and I'm going to fight against it the whole time during this budget and for the rest of my term. So uh, I move the table. Motion is the table. Roll call has been.